Hello, my name is Ryan from Buster Beagle 3D, and today I'll be doing a review of the Wayne Lux K8 Laser Engraver. It's a small and fully enclosed laser engraving and cutting machine that has camera control, Wi-Fi functionality, blue light filtering doors, and an optional air purifier. So is it any good? And would I recommend it? Well, let's find out. I wanted to thank Wayne Lux for providing me with this machine for my honest and unfiltered review. However, there are affiliate links in the video description that do help out the channel if you decide to purchase this, but it doesn't affect my opinions one way or the other. With that out of the way, let's get into it. As you can see, this laser comes pretty much ready to go straight out of the box. You really only have to open it up and remove the power supply, cables, and some foam. The kit also comes with a small material pack just to get you started on a few little projects. It also comes with an extra lens as well as a dry erase marker and a brush. The outside case of the machine is mostly plastic, but does come with some pretty nice safety doors on both the front and back of the machine. The doors are magnetic and the machine will only operate when the doors on both sides are closed. It's a safety feature that makes sure you can't accidentally look at the laser spot while in use to protect your eyes from damage. If you open the machine while the job is in progress, it will immediately stop and resume when the doors are closed. On the rear of the machine is a port for the 12 volt power supply and a USB-C port if you want to control the machine wired to your computer. The K8 can also be controlled wirelessly over Wi-Fi using the company software that I'll talk about in just a moment. On the right side of the machine is a wheel for adjusting the focal height of the laser, as well as an exhaust duct for the optional air purifier. I got my machine with the air purifier, so I had that hooked up for all of my tests, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Inside the machine, you can see the laser itself, as well as the lifting platform. This laser works slightly different than all of the other lasers I have by the fact that instead of adjusting the height of the laser, you actually adjust the height of the workpiece to the laser. That is what that knob on the outside is for. You can even reach the knob from the inside to adjust the height. You simply pull down the focus measuring arm off of the laser and raise the platform until that arm touches the workpiece. Once it touches, then you are at the proper focal height. The platform face is metal with holes in it to provide some air under your cuts while using the machine. The laser head itself moves on a track made from aluminum extrusion that seems to be fairly solid. You can see what's going on inside of the machine thanks to a strip of LED lights on the left of the interior. You also can see your work area in the provided software thanks to the camera on the top of the interior. Finally, the machine has what is labeled as a dust box to handle any falling parts or debris you get while cutting. The version of the machine that I am reviewing is the 10 watt 455 nanometer diode laser. The Wayne Lux K8 also comes in a 2.5 watt and 5 watt versions as well. It has a spot size of 0.08 millimeters, which is pretty fine. The workable area of the K8 is 130 by 130 millimeters, so just over 5 by 5 inches. That's small, but fairly comparable to some of the other smaller laser engraving machines. You also can fit objects larger inside around 7.5 wide by 8.5 inches long. You also have 100 millimeters of height to work with, or about 4 inches. There is also an additional rotary attachment that can be purchased separately to engrave on things like tumblers and other cylindrical objects, However, I don't have the attachment, so I won't be showcasing it. The machine can be operated by the included free software called CutLab X or third-party software such as Lightburn and Laser Gerbil. The machine can also be controlled by a mobile app as well. However, I have not tried that in my testing. Before you can use the machine, you have to install the drivers provided to you as well as download the software to control it. So the software that allows you to use the machine with the Wi-Fi functionality, as well as the camera, is called CutLab X. I have to say that it's fairly limited in scope, but does come with a few features. From what I have seen from some of the other reviews on this machine, this version 1.1.0 1 
has an updated UI that's a, a little buggy. For instance, when you open it, the program opens over multiple screens for me that I can't even resize. I have to click on the start creation and then double click on the top just to have the window minimize. From there, I have to just drag out the window to resize it, otherwise it spans across my scene and then off it where I can't see it. Inside the UI at the bottom here is where you would pick the port that your machine connects to and also where you will set up the Wi-Fi connection. At the time of this review, the camera function on the K8 only works with the machine hooked up through Wi-Fi. Once you are hooked up through Wi-Fi, a camera icon will appear at the top, and when you click it, you should get an image of the screen and your workable area. I have found that I have to click that button to run the process twice to get a better picture. From there, you are free to add your design over the image, and then you can run the machine by pressing start. In my testing of the software, I've had some crashing and some other bugs pop up. You can tell the software is borrowing some features from Lightburn, like the layer setup layout. Even the colors of the layers are the same. However, there is still a lot of room for improvement with this software. It's lacking many image processing options at this time. You can see that you have a few options here in both the line and images, but you're pretty limited and lack any type of dithering for the images or ways to edit your work. The UI is a bit clunky with things like the window setup as well as the fact that I can't resize or move around any of the elements. You can see here that the window of the cut and layers has an odd scroll bar and properties is missing an S, but again, it's a good start, but does leave room for improvement. Also, there is a button at the top here that is used to calibrate the camera so everything aligns correctly. It's supposed to have already been calibrated by the company, but I found that mine was just slightly off. I ended up recalibrating my camera by burning a test grid on the surface and then adjusting the values here. Again, I have a very early pre-launch version of the machine, so there really wasn't any documentation on how to do any of this, but I was able to kind of figure it out. I basically changed the values slightly and then took another picture of the image to see if the grid on top matched. I did this over and over again until the grid I was burning matched the image, which came out pretty close. I was able to burn my company name on this dog tag, and it came out pretty spot on. The software also comes with some of those cool test files that allows you to cut out some neat objects straight out of the box. So that is really what I did first with this machine. I decided to jump right in and make this dinosaur model. It cut out really nice at 100% power and 200 millimeters a minute, in some three millimeter thick basswood that came with the machine. Now, I want to address something that is mentioned in the marketing materials and is slightly misleading, and that is that this machine has a built-in air assist. While the machine does have a fan on the top of the module that funnels air to the laser head, that's not really an air assist in the true definition of what that's supposed to do. While it does help clear smoke, it's not really a focused compressed beam of air that's used by traditional air assist to extinguish what is called the kerf or the material that is being burned away. It's, it's this burning that gives you that dark area around the cut and an air assist is supposed to eliminate that. Again, the fan at the top helps, but it's not a true air assist. More advanced machines come with a powerful air pump that are used for this purpose. The other thing that contributes to a clean cut is the surface that you are cutting over. As you can see, the platform has holes in it, but it's not like a traditional honeycomb or slats that you see on some other laser engravers. The reason you want the holes is because you want air behind the wood so that you have a clean cut. If there is something stopping the beam, then the wood on the backside can be burned. But this is why when you look at the back of the wood, it seems like it's more charred than the front. It's not something you can always prevent, but it might be better to cut lifted off of the platform itself which you can see them doing in some of their promotional material. I had so much fun with the dinosaur that I decided to make the dragon fly as well. Again, this was really fun and it's easy to do and it turned out pretty good. My kids really like playing with these models, so I'm probably gonna be making a few more of them. I also wanted to point out that the enclosure itself did a pretty good job of containing all the smoke for the machine. I really didn't see anything leaking out anywhere. After I played around with cutting in Cut Lab X, I wanted to try the machine with a little more advanced software. The machine again is also compatible with Lightburn, 
which is a paid software package, but pretty much the standard that I use on almost all of my laser engravers. Really, the only things you lose right now by using Lightburn is the camera control and the Wi-Fi functionality. However, what you gain in terms of software capabilities is pretty huge. The first thing I did after opening the machine in Lightburn was a power speed test to see uh, what the machine could do with an engraving on wood. The machine is advertised at speeds of up to 15,000 millimeters a minute, so I wanted to test that out. I ran a quick test on a random piece of wood and it performed as expected. You can see here that it was marking the wood at close to the max speed at 100% power. Even at the still somewhat fast speed of 1500 millimeters a minute, it was strong enough to start burning the wood and almost went completely through at that point. This is also why you should never leave this machine unattended as a flare up can happen at any moment. With that test out of the way, I burned this Yoda image onto a wood disc. It came out pretty nice. I could probably have adjusted a few parameters in the image to make it better, but that's not the fault of the laser at all. Next, I wanted to try an image on a metal business card. The machine comes with a magnetic bracket to help you align your workpiece with the laser. How I made use of this in Lightburn was, I set up my bracket and then I moved the laser until my laser spot was directly in the corner of that bracket. I could then use that as a registration point in Lightburn to know where everything was going to engrave since I don't have a camera in Lightburn. Also, as a side note, you can only move the laser head in the software with the doors closed. After setting this all up, I ran the job on the card at 10,000 millimeters per minute at 32% power and 318 dpi. It actually turned out pretty impressive. I was quite happy with the system that I set up and the results kind of speak for themselves. After I was happy with the metal business card images, I ran a small engraving and cutting job on this wood and again it turned out nice. I really have no complaints there and the job engraved and cut out just fine. I also engraved my logo on some wood and then attempted to burn the same thing on the black scratch off paper that came with the kit. It came out with mixed results and I think I need to work on the power and speed settings to really dial that in. After that, I jumped back into Cut Labs X so I could make use of the camera to engrave on this dog tag that came with the kit. Again, this is after my slight calibration adjustment for the camera and I also marked the surface with a dry erase marker that came with the machine, but after testing I really didn't need to do that. Sometimes you have to do that when working with stainless steel, but the engraving came out white on these tags, which I'm now guessing is some sort of anodized aluminum. After adding my company name, I flipped it over and engraved a cool design on the back. It all worked out pretty nice, and, and I have some really fine detail to it. The last thing that I wanted to test with the machine was cutting thicker materials. I decided to cut a star in this 10 millimeter thick, what I think is pine wood. I ran it at 100% power and 150 millimeters a minute with six passes. I actually stopped it after three passes since I felt like it was done, and it mostly was, but I did have a few small holdouts on some of the tree rings. Four passes would have done it all the way just fine. I probably could have done it in one slower pass, but on thicker cuts, I prefer more passes at faster speeds to prevent the wood from charring. It cut through it, so again, it worked as I would suspect a 10 watt machine to perform. Okay, so now that I've shown you how this machine performs, what are my overall thoughts on this little laser engraver? The first thought I have is about something I've only mentioned in passing, and that is the air purifier that you can purchase as an additional accessory to this machine. While it probably will keep you from setting off your smoke detector and does help with the overall odor, it's really not powerful enough to completely remove the odor from your work area. You are still going to want to have it near an open window or in a place with good ventilation, depending on the type of material or job you're doing. The filter on the K8 is pretty small compared to the, let's call it Brand X version. Now, this air purifier is half the cost of that Brand X version, but it doesn't perform as well. While I was using the machine, I had my secondary exhaust system to catch any odors being pushed out of the back of the filter. Again, it helps a lot, but it's just not perfect. As for the overall build of the K8, 
It again is mostly plastic ABS, but feels pretty solid. The enclosure itself does a pretty good job of keeping all the smoke and fumes inside of the machine until they are blown out the side. The Cutlabs X software isn't the greatest and has a lot of room for improvement, but it's great that the machine works with software like Lightburn and Laser Gerbil, although you do lose Wi-Fi and camera functionality. Overall, it's a fairly cheap laser engraver with some pretty cool features. I wanted to once again thank Wayne Lux for providing me this machine for my honest review, and there are again affiliate links in the video description if you decide this laser engraver is for you. So that's it. If you did find this review helpful, please do give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more videos having to do with laser engraving, 3D printers, injection molding, and all things Maker. Thanks again, stay safe, and we'll see you next time.